Wow, is it really 2019? Um, before we start, I would just like to uh, express how crazy it is that Minecraft has been like been playing Minecraft for like more than a decade now. Not constantly, but um, you know. <laughs> uh, so I think the last time I uploaded a Minecraft video was like 2014 or something. Probably earlier than that. Um, I wanted to show off some designs for um, access control systems <laughs> in Minecraft. My interest in this is, uh, first, like I, I'm a security engineer, I work in the security industry, so <laughs> I don't know, it's just a cliche thing for me to do, but secondly, um, I'm super interested in like building Minecraft bases that are difficult to get into. Um, there's no like key or ownership system in Minecraft. There are blocks that are difficult to destroy. Um, and I'm trying to like develop different uh, strategies for making it very difficult to break uh, walls and also to like perform secure authorization into different areas. Um, one way of doing this is redstone, um, and that has a lot of advantages in that redstone can go through walls, uh, really strong walls, even I think bedrock, which is actually unbreakable. Um, uh, so like in theory, I can build a room where the, it has a, an outer wall of some kind that is made of obsidian and it will take forever to break. I'll probably even have like block update detectors on it to detect if the wall gets broken and then I don't know, blow something up. Um, I've been mulling over the, uh, the idea of, uh, making a combination lock for a while. And while there are combination locks online, um, the designs of them are usually really, really big and not very repeatable. Um, uh, or like the, they don't provide much actual security. Uh, the reason for that is that the Zor gate, which is a necessity in a combination lock, um, is very big in Minecraft. Um, the Zor gate uh, is kind of like an equality test. It's one of the few logic gates that will give you a different... So like, uh, if I have, uh, you know, in a combination lock, if, I'll, I'll just show you what I've got here. So I've got like... This is for setting the code, and this is for like the code input. And in a combination lock, obviously you want to compare these, and that's difficult to do with logic gates. But the Zor gate, however, allows you to say uh, A or B, but not both of them, which is effectively a comparison of the two. Um, and that's rather big in Minecraft. Um, it doesn't stack very well. Um, so I've been looking at like using other properties of the game engine um, to simulate uh, Zor-like capabilities. Um, I tried a bunch of things, including like pushing different pistons up and trying to send a signal, a continuous signal. Uh, but this one is particularly interesting and I think pretty intuitive and uh, and easy to build. Um, obviously, I'm in creative here. I've used a lot of sticky pistons, which are quite expensive in survival. Uh, but that's just because I like using sticky pistons uh, more than I like running redstone everywhere. Um, the concept here is... But, well, maybe I'll just demonstrate first of all, and then we'll talk about how exactly it works. Um, the first thing you can see is like, here's the code that I've set on this side. Um, you can probably see the repeat unit here is the pillars. You can just keep repeating it for more digits in the code. And uh, I can replicate that. Um, you can see that like, if I don't get it right, nothing happens. Um, and then if I set it to the right thing, uh, hopefully, yeah, oh, the door opened. I wasn't sure if I got the code right there. And then uh, just reset that. So if I do that, then the door opens and I can go through. Uh, the door control system itself could definitely be better, but the the, the like entry system works pretty well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's pretty simple actually. Um, when you hit one of these switches, um, it, it causes um, these pillar blocks to be shifted left or right. Um, so you can see they're on the left now. And then if I hit this again, it goes to the right. And so that either prevents or allows water to flow down. Uh, so uh, this this um, one probably, no, it's this one here, corresponds to the same 
um, on the setting side. And unless they are both the same and the pillar blocks are in the same position, the water won't be able to flow down um, and open the door, theory. But occasionally it does this. Um, one thing that I was personally interested in doing was um, just having the system uh, reset itself by pushing all the pistons in and out to clear any water. In theory, the water mechanics shouldn't allow that to happen, but in practice, at least in Minecraft Bedrock, which I'm playing, they do seem to occasionally. Um, yeah, so it's pretty simple. Uh, you you just have one piston uh, for for you have one uh, two pistons, one set of pistons for each side, and then um, when you set it on this side, uh, it has to be replicated on the other side to allow the water to flow through. Um, which You can... Um, a, a thing I like about this is that you can have the actual user interface, the user facing part, completely separate from the mechanism. Because of course any mechanism that you build, if you know somebody's trying to break in can get into the mechanism, they can just override it and get through the door anyway. Um, so this potentially allows you to like build several layers of reinforcement um, to prevent somebody from um, getting in and messing with your stuff. This other one, which is one that I haven't seen before as well, um, is a password-based entry system. Uh, and I will show you how it works first of all, um, and then I'll go over how exactly it works. Um, so here I have a blaze rod named my password one two three four. I put this in the chest and the door opens. If I put something else in, like, I don't know, this stick, or I put this blaze rod in, oops, put this blaze rod in, uh, uh, or like gravel or something, um, it doesn't do anything. Um, this works uh, based on a hack of the way that stacking mechanics work in Minecraft. Um, so two items that have the same name can stack with each other. Because you, So you can use an anvil to name an item. Like, I'm going to name this key. So I get my key, and I can then stack this item with another item called key. But if I have an item called uh, key2, I can't stack that with key. It's a separate item. Um, and so um, I can exploit this by filling a chest full of sticks, or the um, password item. And then using hoppers here to pull the item out of this chest and put it in, try and put it in here. And it won't be able to put the item into this chest unless it can stack with this item. Um, because, uh, and you can see that like things that don't work have been bunched up in here. And then uh, once it stacks, these uh, observers observe the change in items and cause the door to open. Obviously it opens and closes super fast. Uh, I've got a pulse extender here to do the same thing. Um, but this is just, like, I thought a really interesting one for a password-based entry that I haven't seen anyone do. Um, the difference here is that this doesn't go through, uh, you know, you can potentially make this line of hoppers really, really long, um, but at the end of the day, it's much more difficult to prevent an attacker breaking this. Um, even if you made the line of hoppers one block high, the recent update uh, added crawling where you can crawl through one block high spaces. But I think the idea of having like a password system is super appealing, um, especially since like, you know, you may forget your item called key, but then if you have, you know, like a stick or something as your item, you can just name another item key. Uh, you can put that item in the chest and... Uh, I forgot the password isn't actually key, but you can put it in the chest and then it will open the door typically. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I hope uh, this was interesting overall. Uh, this isn't like a building tutorial video or anything, um, but if people are genuinely interested in like um, how exactly they build this, then I don't know. <laughs> they can leave a comment and I will uh, consider making a video of that kind. The wiring is pretty simple. I think that um, the main confusion I've created is just by using these like piston chains, when this redstone block hits this piston, it causes it to extend, um, which pushes this, which causes this piston to extend, and so on. It's just like a, it's just like a wire, but uh, with only slightly different characteristics, um, uh, including like 
in this case, being able to put three things side by side. If you do that with regular redstone, uh, then the redstone all connects up together um, because I want to have it like really dense um, in order to make it as uh, small as possible. All right, thanks for watching. <laughs> have a good one.